First thing I did was to shut off the gas supply. Now I'll unplug the electricity. Now I want to get the water out of the tank, so I should shut off the cold water feed coming into the tank. This is a ball valve, and when I turn it perpendicular to the water supply, it shuts it off. To get the water out, we're going to use a pump. So I just open the drain valve right here at the bottom. Good. By opening all the hot water faucets, you'll break the vacuum and every bit of the hot water goes back to the water heater. Okay. That whining means we've got all the water out of the water heater. Good. So this is the hot water line I'm going to cut right up here. I'm going to clean it first. I'm going to cut it up pretty high. This is a self-tightening tubing cutter. Good. And now for the coals. To disconnect the gas, I just need to break this connection called a union. Breaks away. Good. Okay. All right, Bruce, I'm just going to wheel this out step at a time, careful. I'm applying Teflon tape to the threads of each of these connections, both the hot and the cold. Now on the cold water side, I have a water heater T. In this case, it has three-quarter copper connection here, a thread right here. There's also a tapping right here for the vacuum valve. Now the vacuum valve is designed to break the vacuum anytime you want to service the water heater. You shut the water off, it allows the air in so we can get the water out of the tank. And on the hot side, it's just a three-quarter threaded by three-quarter copper connection. All right, so let's muscle the water heater in. We'll line it up right about there. Good. So now we just clean, flux, and solder up our connections. So Bruce, right underneath the shutoff valve, I've added another valve right here. Now this is pretty cool. This actually is a solenoid valve, and the control head screws right onto that valve. It plugs into 110 volts, and right down here is a sensor that we can put right down at the floor next to the water heater. Now, if that water heater ever leaked, this moisture sensor would pick that up and shut the water pressure off immediately and not flood the whole basement. That's great. Isn't that cool? All right. And now we just reconnect our gas using black threaded pipe. Bruce, just grab that power venter for me, would you? All right, great. So this is now pretty much a conventional water heater. It actually could vent into a chimney, but you don't have one. This is actually a pretty ingenious device. It is a fan to pull the flue gases to outside, but built in is also all the safety devices, the temperature safety and the fan proving switch so that if the fan ever failed, it wouldn't let the burner come on. All right, so we just need to make an electrical connection right there, attach it to the top of the water heater, and it vents out through this PVC. Just want to squeeze it together and hold it for a five count. Let that glue set up. All right, the water heat is firing, the vent's on. It's pretty quiet. Very quiet. All right, so you're going to have clean, hot water, and that's good, right? Great. All right, now, you're also going to have a dry basement because I put a bead of caulking right here. If any water came out of this water heater, it would collect inside of the bead. Now, the automatic shutoff valve has this sensor down here. There's two sensor ports right here. If moisture came between those ports, it would make the contact. It would shut off that shutoff valve so no more water would come in and give you an alarm contact. Okay. Because you can sleep at night and you have plenty of clean, hot water. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm.